Copper and zinc are essential nutrients that work against each other in the body, so they must be carefully balanced for optimal health. An imbalance between the two can lead to all kinds of health issues, because both have different functions and are involved in different enzymes. In general, copper is the more stimulating nutrient of the two. It is involved in energy metabolism, adrenaline production, and due to the hormonal enzymes that it affects, it will retain estrogen. Zinc, on the other hand, is more calming. It is involved in immune function, GABA production, and testosterone and progesterone synthesis. Now, what many people don't know is that often the balance between copper and zinc levels in the body is what's critical for health, not their absolute levels. This balance is reflected in the copper-zinc ratio, or zinc-copper ratio, however you want to measure it. This ratio influences all the things we just talked about, so immune system, neurological health, and hormonal balance. When your copper-zinc ratio is off, it can imbalance your entire biochemistry, promoting things like inflammation and a compromised immune system. Very common is also a hormonal imbalance, especially estrogen dominance. So this takes me to the ideal copper to zinc ratio. Most research that you will find on this topic measures the copper zinc ratio in the blood and it will give you an ideal range between 0.7 and 1 for optimal health. So slightly more zinc than copper in the blood. But of course the absolute value also matters and they are often too low in many lab ranges in my experience. Instead, I would use the following when evaluating your copper and zinc levels. For serum copper, between 70 and 110, and for plasma zinc, between 90 and 135. So again, slightly more zinc than copper. That being said, I actually prefer hair analysis for the zinc-copper ratio instead of blood testing, because a hair analysis is a tissue test, where the actual nutrients are stored. Here, the ideal ratio is 8 to 1 zinc to copper, so way more zinc than copper. This makes sense, since a well-rounded diet will generally have a much higher intake of zinc compared to copper. For example, the RDA for zinc is 8 mg per day for women and 11 mg per day for men, while the RDA for copper is around 900 micrograms, so less than 1 mg. For the right hair testing labs, please watch my video on it, where I explain everything in much more detail if you're interested in this kind of testing. Okay, with that out of the way, what happens when your copper-zinc ratio is imbalanced? Like I said before, an imbalance between the two nutrients has been observed in all kinds of conditions, like depression, cancer, hormone imbalances, chronic infections, and in severe cases, even infertility. In these situations, a copper overload is usually more common than a zinc overload. The reason for this is that copper is much more abundant in our environment than it should be. Common sources include drinking water from copper pipes and stress, which retains copper because copper is directly linked to adrenaline, and also xenoestrogens from our environment. All of these will retain copper and deplete zinc in your body. By the way, this isn't always spotted on a blood test because the overload happens in the tissue, not necessarily in the blood. You can have low copper in the blood and still be overloaded in your organs and connective tissue. I know this is somewhat counterintuitive, but I explain everything in much more detail in a different video where I answer the question whether you should detox or supplement copper. Okay, assuming you're copper dominant, you will be more likely to also be adrenaline dominant, because again, copper is involved in the conversion of dopamine to adrenaline. You will also more likely be estrogen dominant and low in testosterone. And you will be more likely to have a compromised immune system because the copper will block the zinc and zinc has antioxidative properties that are very important for your immune system. Lastly, you are also more likely to have an overly stimulated nervous system because copper ions stimulate uh, nerve cells. Of course, there is also the possibility of being zinc dominant. This is less common and usually the result of too much supplementation or eating a lot of red meat. These people are often difficult to excite, very stoic and less emotional because of their low adrenaline and because zinc favors GABA, which is an inhibitory transmitter. You could also run into immunity problems because some copper is actually needed for healthy immune function. 
When it is in the right amount, it has antimicrobial properties that help fight off infections. And then there are all the symptoms related to a true copper deficiency, like energy problems, hair and connective tissue problems, etc. Again, this usually comes from oversupplementation because normally copper is much more abundant than zinc in most people's lives. The next question is then, of course, if your copper zinc ratio is imbalanced, how do you rebalance it again? This has to be done through diet adjustments and supplements, but it is a highly controversial topic with many different protocols out there. I have video reviews on most of them, which you should check out before making any changes. The most well-known protocols are the root cause protocol, the Walsh protocol, and the mineral balancing approach. The goal of all of these is to reduce biounavailable copper and increase bioavailable copper while also optimizing your zinc levels. My personal favorite is the mineral balancing approach, but all of these protocols have certain pros and cons, which again I explain in much more detail in each of the reviews. When you want to improve your zinc and copper levels, also keep in mind how certain environmental sources will influence your nutrient intake. For example, copper cookware and especially copper piping can drastically increase your copper intake. Stress and certain diets also influence it. For example, vegan diets will more easily lead to copper overload than meat-heavy diets because vegan diets have way less zinc than a meat-heavy diet. And if you work with copper or zinc, for example, as a welder, also keep that in mind. Before you start taking any supplements, make sure to test your copper and zinc levels correctly to understand your body's needs and to avoid unnecessary imbalances. Most people should be very careful with copper supplements before they know their true levels because copper overload is so common nowadays. This just makes sure that your supplements are tailored to your specific needs and minimizes the risk of side effects. I always recommend working with an experienced practitioner to come up with a customized diet plan that fits you and that doesn't create new nutrient imbalances. I have a list of recommended ones in my recovery program if you need more guidance. I hope you liked this video and I will see you in the next one.